down. What do you make of that and where this is going? If they're turning down a raise like that, um, what does that tell you? Well, I think that's uh, it tells you that when you have the most pro-union president and he touts that he is um, emboldening the unions, this is what you get. And I'll tell you who pays for it is the taxpayers. You know, here, from what I understand, the union is asking for a 40 percent raise. Um, you know, the companies have come back with a 20 percent raise. I think any of the taxpayers would love to have a 20 percent raise and think that's great. But, you know, the problem is this is going to we're all going to suffer from this. All right, uh, but that is falling on strikers in it this way, deaf ears, because they think they have a shot. That's why they have turned down these 20 percent or more pay offers, uh, increase offers from management, uh, seizing the day because they say that uh, they've been screwed over and it's high time. They're frustrated. They're at a loss. This is all part of the American breakdown, the aforementioned title of my friend Jerry Baker's latest book. It's, it's his premier book. I call it his premier book. Uh, the editor at large of the Wall Street Journal. You know, Jerry... Uh, We've been talking about the message of your book, which is people are exasperated. You could say the same about strikers. Yeah. Um, imagine the president of the union telling the president of the United States, I know you're bringing two emissaries down here, but we're in no rush to meet them. Mm. Um, and these workers taking matters into their own hands. What do you make of it? Uh, look, I think it's part, Neil, and thanks again for having me on. Um, it's, it's part of the destabilizing... Um, trends that we're really seeing in the country right now, and I, the stuff I talk about in my book. And this, this, this strike is so destabilizing, I think, because the numbers involved, and you know, you heard Nikki Haley there talk about it, and you've talked about it a lot on your show. You know, they want, th they, 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 they want the 36 percent, you know, over four years. Now, you and I are both old enough to remember the 1970s, I think. I right. look a bit Quite older well. than you, but you, you, you've fared rather better than I have in the looks department. Not but, so. um, you know, that was the kind of stuff we got into the 1970s when, when stuff was getting out of control. And I fear that that's where we, we were and really that doesn't happen in the 70s. Whatever deal is ultimately consummated is right. not going to be in a vacuum. Right. And they look, look, they, and again, I don't have, I'm not completely critical of the UAW. You know, they, they have had wage increases below the rate of inflation recently. Companies have done quite well, but they are making this huge transition to electric vehicles. All of that, it's, a lot of that's being driven by policy. They need fewer workers to make electric vehicles. And so economic reality is coming up against political reality. The economic reality is, you know, companies can't afford this kind of level of increase. They're having to make more of these electric vehicles. The political reality is, no, no, you know, we want, we, you know, we're a powerful, you know, we, we, you know, we're supported again, as you heard Nikki saying, you know, most pro-union president out there. And I, you know, this is this to me again. It's all part of this very destabilizing phenomenon that's at work in in the U.S. economy and U.S. But politics. they don't trust their bosses, right? Uh, we right. don't trust, uh, you know, rich CEOs in this country to look after our interests right. in the aggregate. Right. We think the administration is disconnected. Republicans talk out of both ends of their mouth. Both parties have been shepherding this huge debt that has grown, uh, you yep. know, uh, unaddressable. Yeah. So there's a, a, a just a massive frustration with virtually every institution exactly. that you go through. Is there a solution? Yeah, and big and again, no. Thank you for for making that point. It is every, all of these major institutions have lost, huge, forfeited not just a little trust but huge amounts of trust in the last thirty Incredible. years. People don't trust them. And you know what's interesting? And you know we often talk about Donald Trump and politics on this show, Neil, and others too. It's very interesting that that. I do think one of the reasons so many people voted for Trump in 2016 is because they'd had enough of these institutions, right. which they thought had lied to them, had misled them, had misled the country for too long. They thought someone was going to come in and turn it all upside down. Quite interesting, again, to go back to this UAW issue. Many of those union workers voted for Donald Trump. And, you know, right. traditional That's Democrats right. voted for Donald we've Trump. We've heard from more than a few, yeah. Jerry, who are not big fans of the president. Right. Um, you know, uh, they're making that clear as yeah. well. I don't know how that all sorts out, but what do you think? It's another indicator, again, of just how break, how traditional structures, traditional institutions in this country are breaking down. The, the reliability of labor unions to vote for Democratic candidates. For well, who's the, the last Republican one? Ronald Reagan, right? Well, Reagan, famous Macomb right. County, right, you know, Michigan, right. a lot of, uh, I think, uh, But could auto, a Donald auto, auto Trump, if he were the nominee, there? do that? Absolutely. Really? And, and you're hearing okay. the language he's speaking. You know, he's, he speaks the language of these people on a lot of the issues that they care about. And he's been quite careful, actually, not to, you know, he, he's been quite critical of the motor order companies, too. A lot of people don't like some of the positions that some 
companies yeah, leaving know, he's all the time. Don't get too greedy. Yeah. This deal could be your last, yeah. and these jobs will go to China. Yeah, yeah. But he's actually also expressing sympathy with the. You know, he's the one probably more than any. You've got other of those kind of Republicans too, like J.D. Vance, that senator right. in Ohio, who've expressed sympathy with this working these working class voters, many of whom, understandably, not unreasonably, feel they've been displaced. They've been displaced by foreign workers. They've been pushed out. You know, again, I talk about this a lot in my book about the way in which big business has pursued profit and opportunity but you offer overseas solutions. at the expense of the end of your book, You just don't shout and criticize. Yeah. That's, you know, like a cable host. You, you actually look God for forbid. solutions. So yeah. in the end, how do we get out of this? Where do we and how and who is it who... Really part of it is trust. part of it again on this particular issue. Part of it is bringing things home. I talk about that a lot in the final part of the book about one of the things that people, one of the things we've learned in the last uh, from these uh, uh, surveys of trust is that people do trust local. They trust local business. They trust even they trust local politicians. They trust local government. Yeah, they, they don't like trust their local big congressmen. They, yeah, they like yeah. They like small things right. that are accessible to them. They don't like big business. They don't like big tech. They don't like big government. They don't like big media. But they like actually. Something that is closer to them, something that they feel they can identify with, that aligns with their interests. And I think we're going to be have to do a lot of that, you know, bringing jobs back to America. That's that's going on now already. I think that's a good thing. Bringing, but bringing even more so, bringing accountability and power back to the people over their own lives, rather than these very distant, very kind of alienating uh, big institutions that have taken over so much of our lives, whether it's, again, whether it be big tech or big business or big government. We need to get back to, you know, what made America great, which is, you know, Americans. Yeah, I, know, I, I noticed you have that optimism. In the end, we can get through this. But right. are we up to doing just that? Uh, Gerard Baker, America Breakdown, How Americans Lost Trust in Their Leaders and How to Rebuild It. It does make you think, and he, he is an amazing writer, but... He, he foolishly comes up with ideas to try to help us get out of this mess. Where <laughs> other authors just say, there's the mess. You're on your own. I'm out of here. All right. Uh, I highly recommend it.